Good day to the young people of Navajo Nation and throughout the land. This afternoon, we're going to talk a little bit about um, what the message is. Our theme at Wheatfields is looking unto Jesus. And I'm going to um, just do a short devotion from Hebrews 12. Um, Hebrews 12, verse 1 um, or 2. It talked about the race and it talks about, it says, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It tells us here to fix our eyes upon Jesus. And as young people, you know, and, and, and just any age, even older people, elderly people, the things that distract us from fixing our eyes upon Jesus can be a whole host of things and different things. For really young children, it could be their toys. For young people, it could be the technology. For uh, young adults, it could be their careers and their jobs. For the middle age, it's their retirement. For the elderly, it's their grandchildren. At every age, there are things that distract us, things that become more important, things that, that can cause us to take our eyes off of Jesus. And there are so many things that compete for our attention. You know, the more you're driven towards something, like an interest, it might be a hobby, it might be your job, it might be your career, the more time you spend there, the things that are priority to you, you gravitate to them. The more you go towards something, the further away you're, you're going from something else. Um, so let's take for an example, maybe you're getting into fitness. So you spend time running, you spend time jogging, working out. Okay, the time that you take and you put there is going to be time you dedicate there, which is time that's going to maybe be taken from something else that you, you tend it to before you began to do this. Let's say that you have a hobby, maybe sewing, or maybe um, 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 doing your, um, I don't know, different kinds of crafts. The more you gravitate to those, the you're, you're leaving something else. And, it, it, and I'm not saying they're bad, it's just that that's the way it is. The more you gravitate towards something, you're gravitating away from something as well. And here in scripture, it tells us that there are things that can easily entangle us. They can become more important to us than perhaps things that matter. Um, and in this case, what this scripture says is that, that Jesus is the author and the perfecter of our faith. And, um, and that's who we need to fix our eyes upon. You know, we don't usually remember Jesus until we need his help. And, and as you realize, you know, we, we are still going through a pandemic. We are still going through hard times and the ramifications thereof. And so where our eyes are fixed on sometimes the real immediate things, that's not bad. Sometimes you have to. But when you can, when you fixate, fix, it's fixated on these immediate things, um, which sometimes require us to do, we forget the long range, like looking past, saying, hey, wait a minute, how does this fit within the larger picture? I guess that's what I'm saying. How does our immediate concerns, whether it be schooling, whether it be our careers, whether it be finding a job, whether it be the immediate needs that need to be fixed or addressed, I should say. I don't know that anything can ever all be fixed at once, but how can and how does that fit in with this bigger picture when scripture says, keep your eyes 
fixed on Jesus, looking unto Jesus. How can we have these things that are require our immediate attention and still keep our eyes fixed on Jesus? Our lives are so departmentalized. They are so like, this is my school, this is my work, this is my home life, this is my marriage, this is my this and my that and the other. Um, this is my friend's life, this is my girlfriend's life, this is my boyfriend, this is my life. With, and, and so, so compartmentalized that we, we prioritize in, along those things that are important. So the question is, um, if we are to look unto Jesus, where does he fit in? Where, what time does he get? And as believers, as some of you may be believers, where does he fit in? He is uh, an important part of our life. In the Word of God here, it says, He is the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. We understand that he died for us, despising the shame. He, he didn't, you know, he, he suffered a lot in order to go to the cross for us. He was the one who took that cost. And he sat, and then thereafter he sat down at the right hand of God. And he says, For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. Okay? I think that we cannot lose heart. When we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, we see what he was able to do. And another part of the scripture, it tells us that, you know what? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that same spirit lives within us, that Holy Spirit. We can do this. It is hard. It is difficult. It is no fun. It is sorrowful. It is depressing. It is, uh, it is just, just hauls you down all the stuff that's happening all the things that we have to that the restrictions um it just feels like you're so boxed in and and our focus can become so that that we forget to look beyond and say hey wait a minute wait a minute my faith can grow in this faith can't grow without trials Faith can't, can't, can't be exercised in, in a cushy manner. Faith can only be exercised and, and, and challenged when there's trials, when there's stuff that has to be dealt with. And you and I, we know that there's plenty of that. For our young people, it's this remote learning. It was rough. It was tough. It was no fun. It was difficult. It was frustrating. And, and to some extent, we might have to return to that to, in a limited way. How are we going to address that? How can we not get so fixated on the problem of it? How can we look at it and say, you know what? I can look at this in a different way. I'm going to tap into this, this enabling power. Because Jesus says here that he is the author and perfecter of faith. How can my faith be be perfected? How can my faith be, um, you know, when something's authored, it's written. How can my faith be, it's challenged, but how can it grow despite the stuff and the junk and the, 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 the no fun part of it? How can I look at this in a different way? and say, you know what? I'm going to put my faith to work in a great and awesome and mighty God who can, who has, and who will continue to empower me, to help me, to encourage me to see the bigger picture. Keeping our eyes focused on Jesus, keeping our eyes um, fixed on Jesus is, is a challenge to do. Because like I said in the beginning, there's so many things that compete for our attention. But when we quiet our hearts in Psalms, it says to be still and know that I am God. It's a challenge to, to be able to do that and sit before the Lord Almighty and say, Lord Jesus, help my faith. Lord Jesus, help me to be able to do this. We're starting a new school year. For many of you, it was difficult enough as it is to cover the academics 
and there's gaps. You know that there's gaps. You know that nothing happened as it should have happened. How, how, how can you address that? I always said, you know, I know this is a real earthly thing, you know, education here on earth, but it's something that Lord, that, that the Lord knows that is very much present in our lives here on earth. It is a, it's, it's, it is a way for us to um, make steps to, um, to, 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 to meet a goal. And what is it that we're going to do uh, in our education and in our lives to be able to be uh, successful so that we can help others so that we can gain um, not to say that that's the the be in and end all but we very much live in this world and those are some of the things that enable us to to succeed and to be gainful in in our lives and in our work so to keep our eyes focused on Jesus to put these departmentalized things that we like to kind of chop up in our lives in percentages or in however your day is 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 broken up and say okay yeah i have these departmentalized things in my life but you know what i'm going to look up there and keep my eyes on jesus cuz through it and in it all however you approach every one of these things in your lives the focus is that to keep your eyes on jesus because he is the author and the perfecter and finisher of our faith. At the end, what's going to matter? We can't just look so short-sighted that this is all we think about. We also have to look past that and look beyond. Okay? And we know, we learned through this pandemic that, you know what? Um, you just don't know how life turns out. You just don't know how things are going to turn out. Can't just look right here. We always have to look past and look in the, in the, in the long range focus too. Keeping our eyes focused on Jesus. The Word of God, I really want to appoint you. I don't want you to just listen to what I have to say, but go back to the Word of God. Go back to what the, it's so full of instruction. It's so full of application. I'd like to challenge the young people and anyone who's listening to focus on the Word of God. It is God's Word. And there are so many things here that 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 uh, give us the um, the knowledge and the wherewithal as to how to address the things, the very real things that we face in life, our finances, our friendships, our our loyalties, our values, our atanit, ehi, what makes us who we are. It addresses those things and it addresses the heart. It addresses the things that nobody likes to really talk about, the sins that we struggle with, the inadequacies that we have and then the strengths that we have um and 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 those things that that are those gifts that god gives us how to develop those so that uh we can feel successful so that we can feel that this is worth it and all that you know is um when we keep our things our, our lives and our and our minds focused on on, on Jesus. These other things have a different perspective. They have a different outlook. And and believe it or not, and I'd like to challenge you because I was not so long ago a young person. Um, um, I I challenged the Lord with to to help me in, in all of those areas that you are faced with as well. Uh, some of you are single. There's questions about, you know, uh, the person you would want to spend the rest of your life with. Uh, and then and, and some of you have not started your careers yet. And it's like, you know, I wonder how that's going to work out. And some of you have dreams and goals that you want to fulfill. And you're like, you know, you're self-doubting. You know, am I going to be able to do this? Yes or no. Can I do this? Yes or no. Yes, I think I can do this. But how well could I do this? Lots of things that questions that you have. Because though Ahuzenda, you don't know. You don't know how it's going to be in the, in, in the later in the later to be. Um, but you know, when you keep your eyes focused on Jesus, because he's the author and finisher of your faith as a believer, there's a sense of peace and there's a sense of uh, safety and there's a sense of 
um, complete, a completeness about it because you're trusting in Jesus. I would challenge young people um, to ask the Lord, how can I look unto you and trust you in the circumstances that I'm in at the moment? And how can you help me? I'd like to challenge you to ask that question to Jesus. I want you not to focus on me. I want you to focus on the Word of God and to ask Jesus to help you in your circumstances, whatever they may be. It is not for the helpless. It is just not for the people who can't, because humanly speaking, that's what we say. Oh, Jesus is just for those who can't. Well, there's going to come a day in time that we all are going to be in a position where we can't. And, but I do want to say that Jesus is sovereign. Jesus, um, the Father, He's God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are not only are, is sovereign, but um, all powerful, omniscient, omnipotent, all knowing, all present, and we all trust in something. Some trust in money, some trust in, in education, some trust in their own abilities, some trust in um, the medical field. We all place our trust in something. And then those things that we trusted in sometimes fail us. But I do want to say this, you put your trust in Jesus, he will not fail you.